Any departments across the country are in a complete state of crisis. It's that time of year again, ladies and gentlemen. So is the head of emergency medicine. Rising cases of both flu and, yep, you guessed it, COVID, are making the situation worse. A number of hospitals have declared critical incidents, meaning they cannot function as usual due to extraordinary pressure. So all of this is coming amid reports that 500 people a week are dying due to delays in emergency care. Anyway, to lend us his expertise on this topic is oncologist and favourite here at GB News is Dr Carol Sikora. Dr Carol, why on earth are reportedly 500 people a week dying as a result of not getting good enough care in our NHS? What's going on? So, Patrick, there's no doubt there are excess deaths, probably around 500. The exact cause is not clear. Whether it's clogging up in the emergency room, whether it's not being able to get an ambulance, whether more likely it's due to a whole load of things that are, you know, causing the NHS to go into free fall at the moment. Um, it is, you know, I've been a consultant 50, well, 40 years now. I've been qualified 50 years. And there's no doubt I've never seen it quite so bad. Um, things have to be done. You know, I read in the papers about the government should declare an emergency. What's that going to do? De yeah. Everyone can declare what they like. They've Look, got to do something, not declare it. Dr. Curry, you've hit the nail on the head there. There's two big things that I'm sick and tired of hearing. More money. OK, and let's just declare an emergency. Well, the money doesn't appear to go anywhere. It's a bottomless pit. It's been 39 percent increase in real terms in funding since 2010. We've got absolutely naff all to show for it, apart from apparently loads of excess deaths. And then when it comes to as well uh, declaring an emergency, I mean, all right, OK, it's a state of emergency. Let's all panic. I want practical solutions, Dr. Carroll. Give them to me, please. Fix the NHS. <laughs> I can give you a 10-point plan. The trouble is no one would like it. And that's the whole problem for the politicians. They know anything they do to touch the NHS, which has been free for a whole generation of people and completely free, including things that you say really don't have to be done within the NHS, you should perhaps have to pay for. This is all free. People abuse it. And this is the problem we've got now. It needs a complete radical rethink. All solutions that come up are unpopular, whether it's charging for appointments, whether it's actually uh, fining people for not pitching up when they cancel it without cancelling an appointment, whether it's uh, calling for an ambulance when they're really not at all ill, abusing the system. It's all happening every day. Uh, more money, as you rightly say, would make no difference. There's about 200 billion every year going into our health care. Put another 10 money, billion in, it sounds great. A political vote winner, but what are you going to do with it? Just sustain the broken okay. system. We've got to All change right. it. If just quickly, Dr. Carroll, now, are we in a situation where our NHS is so bad that people who can afford to have a duty to go private? They are, and uh, they're doing it because they can't get into the system. I mean, there are three drivers for the whole thing, and it's everywhere in the world. Aging mm. populations, mm. your health care costs about five times less than someone of my age. So mm. you can see as you get older, you require more health care, more older patients. We've got problems. The second problem we've got is that the technology is fantastic. It's expensive, though. It's my business, cancer. You know, the cost of mm. treating a cancer has gone from about £15,000 for a, a way back 20 years ago to about £50,000. So that's another demand. And then, of course, consumerism. People use things, they go onto Google, they see things they want, and they use it. And that's okay. another problem. Yeah. I, uh, Dr. Carroll, look, thank you very, very much. Sorry it's short and sweet, but our viewers and listeners will find out why in a second because we've got to rip through the remainder of this show. Oncologist there, Dr. Carol Sakura, desperately trying to fix our beloved NHS. There we go. Right, OK, I think a lot of people will be disappointed, though, that realistically, right now, what you would be expected to do is pay your taxes until the day you die and you'll have to pay into a service that, frankly, will not serve you in your hour of need.